CEOs and chairmen and owners of uh, very traditional companies. But today we have an unusual one. Uh, we have with us the man who's revolutionized the casino and the gaming business in India, or the gambling business in India, if you will. He's the casino king, Jaydev Modi, chairman of Delta Corp. Jaydev, uh, it's good to see you again and great to have you on the show today. Hi, Udayan. Thanks for having me. Pleasure uh, being on your show. Great. Thanks, uh, Jaydev. Uh, so, you know, for many of us who've spent the last few decades in Bombay, uh, you know, we we know you as the person who was instrumental in the iconic Crossroads Mall or, you know, associated with projects like Peninsula Park or Ashok Towers. And then suddenly you turned course and you moved into casinos and became the gambling king uh, of the country. But, uh, uh, do you have the spirit of a serial entrepreneur, you would say, about you? Uh, then I love doing new things. I like to do different things. Um, Crossroads uh, was the first mall which revolutionized uh, organized retail in India and it was different. The structure was different. It uh, dealt with all the tenancy laws, etc. and made sure that the owner of the mall is safe uh, with the, you know, under the tenancy laws. Uh, corporate Park, uh, Peninsula Corporate Park was the same. Um, it was, uh, I think it was a great uh, development. Uh, it took care of all the needs of corporates and it was new, it was different and uh, I had fun doing it. And then I had enough of uh, real estate and um, I thought I'd take a, a kind of a break uh, when I was 50 and then this opportunity came along it again, again it was different. So. Um, I uh, kind of uh, delved deeper into it and uh, then of course started with one, two and three and we have eight casinos today. It was new and it was exciting and I love the business. So uh, it, it was opportunistic uh, at that time mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I've had uh, a lot of fun in the last 15 years uh, building this business. Was it purely opportunistic, uh, Jaydev, or were you a keen gambler yourself before that, which led you to this opportunity in the first place? I, I can't call myself a serious gambler. <coughs> I like to punt now and then uh, on the races, etc. But this was more uh, like an opportunity that presented itself in Goa, where they said, you know, that they opened to six licenses uh, in Goa uh, offshore. And it was purely opportunistic. It had nothing to do with my passion for racing or, or gambling or anything like that. It was a business for me. And um, I, I understood the numbers well and uh, went for it. But, you know, in India, gambling or anything to do with casinos is seen as, by many people, as something which is not a very honorable pursuit. <coughs> Almost like as if a social stigma is attached to it. Uh, did you ever feel bothered by that? Constantly. But people don't realize that gambling has been part of our culture for, uh, for eons, for uh, years. And uh, it's, it's just become like this because it, it's, it's a soft target for, uh, you know, political, uh, you know, uh, a party on the other side or the opposition looking for something. And they've always targeted these what they call sin businesses, and I've had uh, I've had to deal with that, uh, for, you know, in the last 15 years, and uh, we are now you know kind of used to it, and that has to change uh, hopefully in the coming years. We are a business, and we should be looked at like a business. Mm. It's not just a social <coughs> or cultural phenomenon, even uh, Jaydev. I mean, if you look at government regulations. It almost seems like it's a business which is always swimming against the tide of government regulation, taxation, uh, laws, uh, permissions or not, sometimes given, sometimes taken away. Do you think it will ever go away or will this always remain an overhang on the business per se? I think, uh, I think it's still early days and therefore the overhang will stay. But slowly it will, uh, slowly as you know, time goes by, it will get diluted more and more and people will accept, uh, you know, that there are co corporates that are doing this business and it's not just gambling, it's a, a great evening to come on any of our casinos. It's just not, you know, kind of 
pure it's not a gambling den it's there's entertainment there's great food and uh, it's a great evening out uh, at a casino and it's entertainment really it's not purely gambling and therefore i think people will understand that and uh, and it'll it'll get diluted as time goes by Mm. Where do things stand now, uh, Jaydev, with Goa, which is your primary destination in terms of the land laws, permissions, uh, uh, onshore, offshore? Uh, I mean, are you fully resolved with the litigations and the regulations there, or is it still a grey area? No, in Goa, it's absolutely clear. There is, uh, there is no, there are no grey areas. The little things, uh, you know, kind of come up uh, since it's a new industry. um and uh, regulation is still to come in place uh, you know this thing goes on uh, a little bit uh, you keep getting something or the other and therefore after that thing is resolved it becomes a little clearer and therefore gets less and less gray every every day or every year but otherwise it's smooth sailing uh, there is no issue you know we are managing it What about the Delta in Daman, though? I mean, that that too has been mired by a lot of regulatory issues in the past. So we filed a writ, as you know. We've uh, gone to court four years ago. We are, uh, you know, uh, set to for the final hearing for the last ten, uh, fifteen days. The matters on board, and it keeps coming up, and uh, it uh, it doesn't get heard because of the. Uh, you know the backlog etc but we are at the stage of final hearing and we think that uh, the moment that is done we'll uh, you know we are hoping to get a favorable reply we have a firm uh, you know a letter of intent from the government and from the administration and uh, once the court sees all this i think uh, it should get resolved uh, in our favor hopefully so how soon do you see operation starting in daman and uh, if it does as you expect how how big a contributor could it be to delta corp um it all depends on the on uh, on the courts and uh, when the high court will decide the matter but once it uh, decides the matter uh, we can start uh, we get an order in our favor we can start within 30 days and it will it will be a huge huge uh, a kind of benefit for delta because we think that um uh, daman can do at least 20% of our of what we are current top line is and and contribute a lot to our top line and bottom line it's a huge market it's a great market it will change daman uh, and uh, uh, you know we think it will do extre- exceedingly well we have a nice hotel there which is uh, operating well and we know the kind of customer etc in the region so we think it's very important for the future of delta corp and i uh, hope to get a favorable uh, judgment from the courts mm. now since you mentioned the hotel in daman i also wanted to ask you about the hospitality ventures which delta has i mean is it just a uh, you know necessity kind of a project for you because obviously the return ratios in hotels as you would know better than most people are nowhere compared to the return uh, from the casino business so uh, do you do it because you have to do it or is it a business which excites you the hospitality part of it no absolutely uh, it doesn't excite me at all it we only uh, we only like to do a hotel where we run uh, the uh, you know the gaming casino business because we need to house our players and a hotel is an integral part of that and uh, the hotel business really doesn't make money uh, with land prices and cost of construction the way uh, you know uh, has been for the last few years and gone even further in the last 2 uh, 2 two, three years during covid it just doesn't make sense uh, but it's crucial to our gaming business <clears throat> hmm You also have projects in Sikkim and in Kathmandu. I I want to understand from you how what kind of potential you see in those businesses. Are they peripheral in nature? I mean just to extend the brand to other geographies or do you see meaningful potential in either Sikkim or in Nepal? So we've been running these uh, at least Sikkim for the last few years. It's a small market but it's a steady market. and uh, um, uh, kathmandu you know we've uh, we've opened recently very very recently the moment we opened within a few days we had to shut because of covid and we opened only last year reopened last year 
that's a big market <clears throat> and uh, uh, if uh, if uh, we get an opportunity we'd like to do uh, you know a, a more uh, one a couple more casinos in 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 Nepal but in Sikkim i think uh, what we have is enough for the market and uh, once the market grows we'll look at other opportunities but they are all markets uh, compared to goa yeah right now you know having been such an early starter in this casino business uh, in the real casino business the physical casinos one would have thought that you were in the perfect position to have been the early entrant and be the number one player in the online gaming business as well uh, and while you have made strides out there with Adda 52 would you concede that uh, the success or your dominance in that space is not nearly as much as in the physical casino domain no clearly not um, even Adda 52 uh, is compared to you know some of the other gaming businesses it's uh, poker as such is a smaller kind of uh, um, uh, smaller business than uh, fantasy or rummy etc but um, it's there is a there is a huge future because the the younger kind of uh, uh, younger people play poker more than they do rummy and we think that we can grow the poker business uh, substantially over the next few years we also have a small rummy business which we are trying to grow and we have a multi gaming platform but uh, i think that um, being the leader in the uh, uh, in the actual uh, physical gaming space is going to be much larger because we haven't scratched the surface yet and uh, we'll be able to grow that much faster we understand that business much better um, and uh, so i think uh, i think we, have, we we want to actually grow both the businesses but the the casino business the live casino business is something closer to our heart uh, and has been but now it's changing we are seriously kind of uh, making a lot of effort to grow our online business as well in the multi gaming platform and in the real money gaming space having said that you're about to do a ipo of your technology company or the online part delta tech uh, if you can give us an update of where things stand on that and uh, how soon we can expect the ipo to go through because it's it's taken a bit of a while to hit the market so we've been waiting for the the approval from sebi they've been backlogged uh, and therefore uh, you know it just took, took longer to get the clearance from sebi which we've got just a few days ago so now we are in touch with the merchant bankers and we are doing a dipstick meeting uh, you know various investors etc going to do a road show uh, uh, from starting now going into november and then looking at markets uh, in november we hope to launch uh, soon after that um, we think we think that we can finish the entire uh, ipo uh, uh, by the end of this year at least hoping to do that but it all depends on the markets uh, udan Mm. And with the money that you raise, I mean, what will be the focus of Delta Tech uh, going forward? We, you will have capital on your hands. Uh, I mean, where is the real opportunity according to you, uh, Jaydev? I mean, is it in uh, the real money games? Is it in the casual games? Is it in esports? Where, which direction do you want to take the online business in? So, um... We'd like to take it in in the two uh, verticals, which is the real money gaming space and the casual games, which is the multi gaming platform. We restrict ourselves to those, the, those two areas. We will do it organically and inorganically. We'll make some uh, acquisitions. There are lots of smart uh, young guys around who uh, who don't have the capital to grow. We you know kind of tie up with them, etc. And uh, and grow uh, businesses uh, in both these verticals. Uh, there's a lot to be done, actually. At this point, a quick break, but we shall return with Jaydev Modi, chairman of Delta Corp, in just a minute.
Welcome back. You're watching the Business Today show, and I've been in conversation with India's casino king, Jaydev Modi. What are your thoughts on what the government is trying to do with on the online gaming side, on in, with regard to laws and taxation, GST, etc.? Because there have been a lot of complaints from the industry about uh, some of the taxation being actually punitive uh, and restrictive. Uh, do you agree with that assessment? And what would your suggestions be on that front? So there are two aspects to uh, to this. One is the regulation of uh, online sites which are doing business, and the other is the GST issue. So as far as uh, uh, regulating is concerned, um, government has finally seen that it is it, this is a large business and it's going to grow even more. And uh, they are even today there's an article saying that they are going to regulate, they are going to put things in place. They license uh, uh, online gaming companies. They'll do proper KYC online, etc. And this is going to be very, very important because there are so many illegal gaming sites that you know people operate in India. Some of them from overseas, from Cyprus, from non-regulated areas, and uh, they don't pay GST. They are not licensed. There's no reliability on. Uh, payouts, etc. So regulation is the number one thing that the government needs to do, which they are doing actually now. The other is the GST part, where there is this whole confusion about what the GST should be, how it should be charged, uh, whether skill games and uh, uh, skill games are different from real money games, or playing for money for on skill games should be the same as pure gambling, uh, uh, GST on pure gambling, which is all now being uh, kind of addressed by the GOM appointed by the council. The GOM has met a few times. They've actually made the effort to go to um, uh, race courses, to casinos. They've talked to online people and they have finally have clarity that uh, these three verticals that are being questioned, which, which, is, which are horse racing, online gaming and casinos, how how they should be taxed and they should be different from each other. They cannot be the same because each one is a different business. One is uh, either as different as making steel and cement. So they finally realized that and uh, they are in the process of putting in their reports, etc. and rationalizing uh, uh, their, uh, the entire process of how GST is to be paid and how it is to be charged. Um, I think uh, they will all be on, uh, you know, we are already paying 28%, uh, which is the highest rate of GST for casinos, but the online uh, gaming space pays 18% and horse racing pays 28%. It's the method that is important. And if they rationalize that, all these three industries can, can really grow. And uh, uh, we are hoping that uh, they will, uh, uh, that the GOM will, um, uh, suggest to the council how this is to be done because the knowledge is much, much greater now than it was, uh, say, a year ago. Mm. So much of your work seems to be tied up with all these regulations, taxation, permissions, uh, you know, litigations. Do you sometimes feel that, you know, you're almost like a quasi lawyer or more than an entrepreneur or a, a head of a business? <laughs> uh, yeah, but it, it's happening all over. It's not only uh, it's not only in our business. Um, you know, uh, everything's getting tighter. Uh, you know, compliance has become very is very important now. And um, with the new GST law, which is still uh, new, in there are so many new acts that have that the government has promoted in the last few years, and therefore. Uh, there is no, there, uh, just to get clarity, uh, litigation has to happen and uh, the right judgments come in and there's a whole learning process. It's not only for me, I think, or for my business, it's for a lot of industries and uh, we are having our fair share of it, frankly. Does it help to have uh, pr pr arguably India's sharpest lawyer as your wife, Zia Modi? <laughs> of course it does. It, it, it certainly does. Um, she is a strickler for uh, for uh, compliance and uh, doing things the right way, and uh, it's been very useful. Her input has always been uh, fabulous. 
you know, for a lot of people, it's an odd marriage, if you don't mind me saying that. I mean, here you are running casinos and you're looking looked on as a the gambling king. And you go home to the spouse who's, uh, you know, the model of probity in corporate life, which as India's top corporate lawyer. Uh, how, how do the two sit together? Uh, tough, tough sometimes. It's tough sometimes. We are on uh, a north and south pole in what we do. But um, it's working so far, so no worries there. <laughs> I'm sure there aren't. But I also want to ask you about your association with other, you know, titans of Indian business. Because, you know, you have an old association with Ajay Piramal uh, from back in the real estate days. Uh, and with Delta Corp's uh, foray into the African real estate business, I think you also partnered with Mukesh Ambani. I mean, uh, how has it been interacting and engaging with these people? That's right. No, fantastic. I mean, with uh, Ajay, I was uh, associated with Ajay uh, for years and years. Uh, and his management style is uh, unbeatable. He's, he's fantastic, uh, you know, to deal with. Uh, he uh, never questions uh, anything, uh, very trusting. And uh, it was fabulous to work with him, frankly. And as far as uh, 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 doing the Africa bit with uh, with uh, Mukesh Ambani was concerned, he was uh, he he was and still is very very excited uh, about Africa. He thinks it's uh, he thinks it's that there is going to be a huge future. The time for Africa will come. But we think uh, we got into it too early. I think uh, the country the the whole. Most of the continent needs another 20, 30 years to kind of come to um, a level where they can actually, you know, be the next uh, uh, next um, continent of the future. Right now, it's uh, India, and uh, it, it'll happen in Africa. But the time we went there, it was a bit early. We found it very difficult to deal with the bureaucracy, etc. And therefore, we built seven, eight uh, large projects there, and uh, then slowly kind of uh, got out of it and I've started focusing on our gaming business again. But uh, uh, all I can say it was fabulous working with both of them um, uh, and uh, I really enjoyed it. Mm. And the other person I want to ask you about is uh, Rakesh Junjunwala who passed away recently. I mean for a long time a staunch supporter of your business and I mean I've heard him speak so uh, passionately about Delta Corp and I think he still remains a significant shareholder. What were your interactions with him like? I'm sure there have been many. How do you remember him? Uh, then I think you know him. I've seen your interviews with him. I think you know him as well as I do. You know uh, what kind of a... Fa I mean, he was a fabulous guy, extremely sharp, uh, totally honest. He said what was in his mind and in his heart. Um, and he was great to have uh, on board uh, our uh, company board. He uh, added a, a lot, a lot of value uh, to our thinking. And uh, it was just amazing the way he saw numbers and he saw the business and he saw the future. Uh, it was, he, we really are going to miss him. Uh, he, it, was, it was so entertaining to, for him to be a, when, he, when he was on the board. And we are going to miss all that. Mm, true. And that's where we'll end this show, Jaydev. Uh, it's been great talking to you. I wish you great luck with your businesses, both online and offline. And uh, it was a pleasure having you on the show today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dan.
make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. I don't read the news. I read between the lines to tell you the true version of events. The true story of our times. To document grief, the toughest assignment for any journalist to be. From those who matter. Women politicians gonna stick up for each other. Of those who should matter. I document the truth. I don't distort the truth. I don't glamorize the truth. I don't gloss over the truth. The ghosts of India's contentious medieval history have come knocking again. I hustle for the truth. On the ground, in the newsroom, in the I studio. I don't try to grab eyeballs. I inform you to make you see the point. To the point with Preeti Chaudhary at these times only on India Today. Co powered by RK Marble, Khub Surat Imandari. In association with Geo Mart, Harkar Kamat. Presented by Dhul Aye, Parghar Pe Natik Pai.